the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the sower went forth to sow. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And to those that received him, he gave the power to become the sons and daughters of the Most High. A sower went forth to sow. The timeless one entered time. The God, be, uh, the Word, became the God man so that we might live a divine and human life, that we might participate in his divine grace. A sower went forth to sow, <clears throat> but he constrained no one. We hear in today's gospel, our Lord saying, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. And so it's all for us to respond or to not respond. The various uh, locations that our Lord described represent the condition of a person's heart and their condition and environment. So the sower went forth and he sowed on the wayside and the fowls of the air came and gobbled up the seed. And so that wayside is the realm of heresy where the, the devil confuses men they hear a false notion concerning our Lord's word and the doctrine of the church. And so then the devil easily overturns people and removes them from participating in this word. <clears throat> the wayside is also the life of dissipation. St. Paul says that the, a carnal man cannot receive the things of the spirit. So a carnal man a person who lives according to the flesh doesn't have the capacity to come to the knowledge of God. I mentioned last night about the three degrees of knowledge, and the first degree of knowledge is um, a philosophy or science or agriculture. It's the things of this world. And these are very, very useful, but it does not unite a person with God. And so it takes the second degree of knowledge uh, comes only with uh, the discipline of seeking things spiritual, of restraining one's appetites, of fasting according to the church's rules, of reading the things of the church, the Holy Scripture, and in prayer. And it's so it's through this activity that we our hearts become um, able to receive the seed of God. But if we don't do any of these things, then our heart is like the wayside, where there's no way that the the root the the seed can take root. And so <clears throat> a sower went forth to sow, and, it went, and he sowed on stony ground. And so where there's no deepness of earth, and a person uh, is joyous at first and abides in the church for a while, and then when temptation comes, then they fall away. And so how do we break up our heart so it's not a stony ground? It's through patient endurance. It's through enduring temptation and asking God for help. Uh, one of the ways that we're all tempted from time to time is our brother or our sister sins against us, and we can become angry and resent the church, even though it's not the church's fault. And we can be estranged from the things of the church, and the seed of the word of God doesn't take root. But if we constrain ourselves and we ask God to help us forgive our enemies and forgive those that sinned against us with his grace our heart is broken up and we receive the overshadowing of God's uh, Holy Spirit and even though we're tormented in this life over certain things or we have to be patient with certain things there's a joy a quiet joy in our hearts because we know that God's gifts are eternal and they're not simply of this world. They console us in this world, but then we partake of them truly in the next. And so a sower went forth to sow, and he sowed, <coughs> excuse me, he sowed on good earth, and the land brought forth 30, 60, and 100 fold. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the one. He sowed in the midst of thorns. And so in the thorns, the, the seed takes root, and it, it could be a person of a good disposition, 
someone who fights against the passions, but then time goes on, and then because of the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches, thorns come up and they choke, and that is a person becomes so consumed with the things of this world that they don't invest their time in the spiritual realm, which is the best investment in life because it, it pays off in eternity. And so that chokes a person, and even though they made an initial progress, that growth is, is choked by the, uh, the weeds and thorns of the cares of this life. And so <clears throat> the sower sowed in good ground and it brought forth 30, 60, and 100 fold. The Holy Fathers teach that the 30 fold is the average person where they hear from the church and they um, learn of God through the writings of the fathers and they bring forth fruit. And 60-fold is the monastic life where a person who withdraws from the world, and this is in general, these, these, and, and, and participates more in the things of God and makes more progress. And the 100-fold are those people who are taught of God himself. And we know from time to time concerning saints where they receive direct revelation from God and taught the church. Well, let's say St. Gregory Palamas, St. Gregory the Theologian, some of these great saints who... Uh, were so immersed in the things of God, like say, for instance, St. Anthony the Great, who worked with St. Athanasius the Great during the first centuries, and when the Arian controversy came, it was the, the ascetics and St. Anthony and those helped St. Athanasius, but St. Athanasius himself was a person who received of the things of God, and so um, that hundredfold are those God-bearing fathers who receive theoria and, and guide us. And so may God grant that you all bring forth fruit in this parish and you, be, and you become like a large and shady tree that comforts each other and causes a consolation and spiritual growth that ye might rejoice together in this age and the age to come. Amen.